Hey folks, how's it going? So Shadow Calamity finally got updated with the rank challenge. This one was all right-ish, managed to clear up to difficulty 12. Easier than some of the challenge modes, way easier than Farsight Chat. So in here, all enemies enter battle when any enemy unit is defeated. Taunt, AoE for the entire map. Not that bad a deal. For every Calamity 8 strength and have in battle, the Apostle's damage dealt is increased by 10%. For every Apostle alive, the damage received by Calamity 8 decreased by 10%. There's going to be 3 Calamities, 3 Apostles and little tanks. Following this up, 24% attack and defense for all of the enemies, 1 debuff clear at the start of every turn, 20% damage reduction, 12% attack and defense, extra strength calamity, plus one movement, blocks passive, blocks reaction, and of course, they gain toughness. Honestly, really, really like the way they're doing the challenge modes with all the different modifiers, but let's get into combat and see how this went. We've got two little tanks in here that barrel can just one shot, those are not an issue. The strength tank in here is going to protect this thing that does a lot of AoE damage, plus Scorch. This skill alone makes me want to get rid of this guy first thing first, and this is what I'm going to try and do. Because the others, yeah, they heal, they dispel a couple of debuffs, but the basic attack doesn't actually deal that much damage. So even if they still have the damage reduction, I can leave these guys for later. The idea is to just leave Safia to run around and take care of these two after all the other Calamity's strength are gone. For these, the green one, little bit annoying, mostly because it protects this one. The blue one inflicts heal block, AoE, but thankfully the AoE for that heal block is only one tile. And then we have the red one that just needs to be hit on the backside. Not that bad, really not that bad. So we start with Marsh Command and we start heading over to this side. This one might push, but it pushes on the other side, thankfully. Oh, right. Meitha, in order to avoid some nasty situations, I'm not running her with any of the knockbacks. I'm running her with the extra guard. Come on, everybody. Should be cast as often as possible, but at the same time, if that doesn't happen, Guard still lets her take one hit per turn. Next one, anyone hits Safia, she can just dodge. So of course, again, moving forward. And we close the first turn off with a Sacred Sanctuary. Turn 2. Now, this was a little bit weird, because Safia got taunted by someone, but I don't see a taunt skill anywhere. Still, thankfully the damage was not that high, thankfully she's still alive, but you can't rely on dodge. That's another little bit of a negative here. Of course, since she got hit by the blue one, she also got killed block. But we can just chill around Meitha for a turn or two. As long as Meitha can still swap her out, it's going to be fine. For now, we're just going to take care of huddling together a little bit and setting stuff up to take down the Calamity up on this side. The spell for the heal block. And the other finally starting to recover a little bit of health. 
Double Calamity right in front of us. Prime time for some nice AoE damage. But most importantly, they left the Calamity alone. And this is basically all this threat, leaving the entire group with Beryl to take care of the strength calamities, while Safia takes care of the backline ones. The little hangman acting as extra pieces on the board. That is so insanely good. I think a couple of summons alone managed to eat somewhere between 20,000 to 30,000 damage due to the sheer amount of hits that they got from the ranged units. Uh, here I had to sadly let the Calamity go, otherwise Safia would die to the shield strength. But we're still doing fine. If anything, the one weird thing is that the red strength on the right side has not activated quite yet, as we did kill one of the little shielders. And that's the OE with the burn. Thankfully, everyone was nice and healthy. And after all this time, I still cannot believe just how happy I am to have gotten Samantha. Because yeah, Inanna helps a lot, she's great, but that single target heal... That single target heal increases your effective HP by so, so much. Right, these were a little bit close, but then again, one hit, thankfully, doesn't one shot. Swap number one. Swap number two. And we can start taking care of the red strength. I really like these ones, they are the least annoying, easier to take down strengths. So we're going to make quick work of them. There's the AoE disabled. And that's the red strength gun. Now we two. 10% damage reduction buffs gun, we can start finally running for the other ones. And again, these should be fairly quick work as well. There. These things are so, so damn good. 
nice little top up, and we set off for the end of the stage. And there we have them. One Calamity Gun, second Calamity Gun, just one strength left, as well as the other Calamity over on the other side. This one thankfully still came to pick on Mita rather than pushing her down in the field. And since the taunting has stopped, she can finally just sit and dodge. But yeah, thankfully the enemy doesn't one shot you, so you can just bounce back from every single attack. And this one actually turned out to be quite easy. Uh, might be due to the units, but I also don't think I'm using anything crazy. Barrel was released when the game came out. She was on the first 75% banner. Edda might be a bit more of a rare pick. I don't think that many people rolled for Edda unless they wanted to go for high magic damage. And Safia's job, I think Cole can also deal. But yeah, that's it. 11 turns, done with the highest difficulty. When it comes to ranking, somehow managed to rank 34th, but yeah, fairly have to be set up. Alright then, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck if you want to try for the highest difficulty as well, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!